Welcome back to Boston. We're down in the seaport. This is theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host Paul Gillen. Sebastian Moss is here. He's a senior enterprise architect at Bitmark. Sebastian, thanks for coming to theCUBE. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the United you. States. Good to have you in Boston. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. It's uh, good to be uh, on a live summit again after uh, those uh, Testing two years. Strange, isn't it? I mean, people kind of don't know what to do, shake, bump, fist yeah, bump, yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. but we're, everybody wants to get out of the, the, the home, the lockdown, and you know, there's a real pent up demand. Tell us about Bitmark. Um, Bitmark is a managed service uh, provider for um, German statutory health insurance companies. Um, we manage about our software that we develop um, is for about 85% of the uh, German health insurance companies. Um, we have, uh, not only do we build the software, we also have data centers where we run software for, for our customers. Um, and it's everything that a health insurance company is uh, mandatory to have to run their business, so to speak. What, what's the life of an enterprise architect like these days? And how, how has it evolved? How has it changed? Uh, I mean, independent of the pandemic, we'll get to that. But but you know, technology changes, organizational objectives have, have changed, the public policy changes. How how has your the life of an enterprise architect changed? Um, well, we we have this uh, big monolith uh, J2E application that is uh, run on JBoss, um, and now. We want to we want to change that into a more modern environment and using uh, OpenShift to do that. Um, and yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of regu regulatory things that come up that need to be um, need to be figured in. Uh, there is new demands that our customers have that we need to figure out how to get to market. Uh, and to be able to deliver software more faster and you know, make the turnaround uh, or have the turnaround be less. So kind of following the technology trends of going from big monolith to microservices yeah. and containerization and distributed data, the, the, the whole Scalability, uh, you know, and quick turnaround. That is, that is the uh, main focus. So the application that you're here talking about, this pastry pacing application, kind of a new market for you, a new direction. Is this part of that uh, overall shift to a more modular microservices based uh, structure? Um, uh, well, we, we, we had applications like this before, but this is a new branch of it because um, there's a strong drive in Germany to for more digital digitalization um, and to have a new interacting model with the customer from basic things to more advanced features like medication services, vaccination status, um, managing your allergies, and that's an added value that we want to give uh, for our customers so they can their customers can benefit. I don't know what it's like in Germany, but in the United States, it, you used to call up the doctor and say, hey, can, can I just, do, can we do this over the phone? No, you got to come into the office. <laughs> and then yeah. of course, with right. the pandemic, it was like, you can't come into the office. It was just total flipping, because you could get 80% of what you needed done, and this is what your app enabled, uh, essentially, yeah. right? And some that and some added value as well uh, to to give um, yeah a, a benefit for using this uh, online interaction for um, the insured people, the the patients. Essentially, a digital gateway, including your data. Well, that's the other thing you can't get. Right, as a patient. You can't ever get through your data. It's like, <laughs> right. it's, it's you can get it, but nobody else can it, get it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's Maybe hard for you to get it, because of, again, in the United States, HIPAA and the, and the, and the requirements for privacy mm -hmm. restrict often access to, to data. You have to go through hoops to get it. So, uh, so, so that experience is what you codified in your application, yes? Um, yes, we have this uh, unique data set of all health-related information that people have to, uh, interact with in, in when they're sick or when they deal with a healthcare company. Um, and yeah, we want to provide that data to the customers so they're able to look at it. Um, there's also the uh, electronic patient folder, you can say, um, where there's data like uh, medical exams and stuff in there that they have access to. We provide that as well for, for our customers. Um, but uh, yeah, it is about the interaction and that I can see 
when I put something in to my insurance company via email or the doctor puts something in, that I have the interaction on my phone and see when it was delivered um, to them, when it's active, when I get the money, stuff like that. Now, this application is built on OpenShift. It's cloud native, yeah. uh, has all the constructs. How different was that for your development team from building something like, you mentioned the monolithic JBoss application that you already have. How different was building the cloud native uh, uh, constructs? Um, it's quite different. I mean, it's building software. There's a lot of the same things involved. We've been, we've been agile and scrum uh, before and so on. But we now have a, um, we're trying to be, f or no, we're actually achieved to be faster in bringing this to market, um, deploying it in different data centers, doing it all automatically, doing automatic testing uh, right as part of the pipeline. Um, there's there's a lot of huge steps that we can we're able to take because of the technology, and that's why we did go there in the first place. That's why we said, okay, this is it needs to be uh, cloud native. You found that Red, Red Hat had the full suite of tools that you needed? Um, yeah, I mean, we've, there's some open source stuff that we also integrated into the pipeline and everything, but there's a lot of, we, we, for example, we're using the uh, three scale, uh, the API management from, from Red Hat, um, just to be able to uh, use the functionality that we build that the customers can use the functionality in other products that they use, that third partner people, uh, uh, third partner companies can, are able to use the services as well. Okay, so the, the, the dumb question is, but I'll ask it anyway, is you could get this stuff for free. Kubernetes, open source. You, know, you could get EKS for free. Why don't you just use the freebie? Why? Um, <laughs> well, we're, we're on a scale with so many um, uh, customers and data centers that we have to, take that we do need support in, in a way. Um, and I usually say is if we take software from whoever, whatever company it is, we're going to break it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, the transaction load that we have is, is quite uh, it's an, um, intense. And the performance that we need, uh, especially in the, in the business to business um, market, is, is so big that we do need the interaction with with a vendor and that they're able to help us uh, with certain escalations. German, so. Germans play rough. So, um, <laughs> I, you know, when a, when a vendor announces an innovation lab, I always go, okay, that's an EBC, like an executive <laughs> briefing center, it's all going to be used for sales. But my understanding is you actually leverage the innovation labs. It was actually helpful in building this application. Is that I, true? I, I actually uh, took part in the Open Innovation Lab that we did with Red Hat, and we knew we knew what we wanted to do. We, we knew the technology, we knew what we wanted to have done, um, but they helped us to to get there step by step with the with the tools they have, the um, uh, you know the ways of working and how this is this is built. It really lends itself to to build that step by step and worry about some stuff later and just do it. Um, yeah, piecemeal. This is also a new market for you. It's your first real business to consumer facing application. That's, that implies a very different approach to experience design, uh, to how you- And uh, performance, uh, yeah. Yeah, perform exactly. Uh, how did your development team adapt to that? Um, well, there's, there's you know certain things that you build into the process, like integration testing, automated integration testing, where the application just gets checked right after you check in your software. Um, we built in load testing to, you know, we have an idea of how many transactions per seconds there will be, and so the load testing takes care of that as well. Um, and that is easier if you have a small piece of software instead of the whole monolith that we usually have. And so you, we're able to, to build it quicker and you get it out quick in, in hours. How, how have you, um access customer feedback, you do your you know, net promoter score surveys. What, what's the, been the customer reaction, your, your consumer reaction? Um, they, the they I mean, I'm kind of the wrong guy to talk to, to uh, about, <laughs> to talk about Come on, that. you architected the thing. Yeah, I, I did, <laughs> and, 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 and the feedback has been, <laughs> it's been very good so far, uh, and we're pretty happy with it. Uh, it's, it's running uh, very well. Um, I don't quite know how they got there, our customer does uh, you know uh, questionnaires and, and stuff like that? Yeah. And we have a, a different depart uh, department to to uh, 
solicit feedback on that. But from what I hear, uh, it's, it's received very well. One of the cloud native features I understand you used extensively was APIs uh -huh. uh, for integrations. How are you making this application accessible to partners? What, I mean, what are you exposing? How will you use those APIs to enhance the value through, through an ecosystem of partners? Um, well, we document them. Um, and so they're out there to use, and uh, as long as there's a, um, a security process with an um, EM that we have in front of it, um, they're open source um, APIs. So, uh, as I said, they have other programs that they wrote themselves or that they bought that are able to use those APIs um, from an open API document. Uh, and, and just interact with that as long as the user is uh, authenticated. They're able to, to get this, this data and show it in a different context and use it in a different context. Do you play golf? Um, I used to a little time ago, and not anymore. Now. Do you know what a mulligan is? Yes, I did. Okay, if you had a mulligan, you'd do this all over again, what, what, what would you do differently? Um, that's an interesting question. I, I'm not sure. Um, you say you're smarter after after you've done that, yeah. and and of course there's uh, there's there, there there's certainly were, were things that I didn't expect that would happen, um, like how how really you need to go modular and on on everything and need your own resource and infrastructure, um, because we came from a very centralized um, uh, scope. We had a database that is a big DB2 database. Um, and now we're going into smaller database and not decentralize a lot. Um, and that was something that the extent of it I didn't expect. I, I wanted to use more smaller things. And, and that was something that we very quickly learned that no, we ne really need to separate stuff out. Was that an organizational sort of mindset shift? Um, are, you, are you rethinking or re-architecting your data? Um, your data architecture as part of that, or is that more, or is this more just sort of tactical for this app? Um, no, we definitely need to need to do this because uh, it really gets, um, or it really is a, a, um, something to handle a, a big pool of data is, is really a challenge. It can be a challenge at times. To scale. To, to, to scale that up, yeah. right. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to, to separate that out and double some data, that's that's going to be a thing. It's going to be more data at the end, but since it's scaled out and, and decentralized, that will help. A lot of organizations would say, well, we want to keep it centralized, monolithic, which is kind of a negative term, but <laughs> I, I think it's true, uh, because it's more cost effective. We're not going to duplicate things as much. We're going to have roles that are dedicated, but it sounds like you're seeing a business advantage of distributing those functions, decentralizing those functions to a right, certain extent. Right, because if you if you have a centralized mon monolith, and it, I, yeah, it might be negative, but it really is, it's a good working software. Yeah. Um, but to have that, it's um, it's really hard to release new features and new, new you know, even bug fixes. It, it just takes time, it, it is uh, uh, a time consu consuming process. And if you have it decentralized and in smaller packages, you can just do a fix, run it through the pipeline, have the testing done, and just put that out within hours. How um, important was it to Bitmark to build this application on an open source platform? Um, the open source didn't come so much in our perspective of things, or so we didn't consider it that much. It was just, this is there, this works, we have a good support behind that. Um, we are, our our code is not open source, and we're not going to no, anytime you're, you're soon. Um, we're actually thinking about having parts that might be uh, a kind of open source-ish, uh, just in the healthcare community kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that didn't fa fa factor in as much. Uh, it was just something so that we had experience. With. Another architecture question. So you've got the application stack, right? I can use that term, all the application development tools that you built, use to build the application. And then you've got the data that the application needs. How are those architected? Are they 
sort of separate entities? Are they coming together? Um, we used to ha we ha used to have uh, a j day, um, an MDA approach, uh, uh -huh. a J2E. Um, so they are very strong connected. That is, there's just in the database there are models and entities that we use in the uh, in the JBoss. Um, and we're, well, we're still going to use Hibernate to to uh, to do the G D uh, G UPA, but it's uh, yeah, it, it's something that needs to be restructured because it just takes a lot of resources to manage data from different parts of the application, bringing them together, um, that will we'll need to change. And what about new data sources? If I came to you and said, Sebastian, I need to inject new data into the, the app, I need to mm -hmm. get this, to, how, how, how difficult or, or fast, easy is that? Uh, and now, in the, in the world now, or Actually, where we want to go? Can you compare before and now? I mean, um, what would have to happen before? Would be in, like in, a, the time, in the time frame, it's, it's, it's not, it's hard to say. I mean, but if you have a project right now, we're talking uh, months, uh, like a year, to, to get it done, get it tested, and then it even takes um, up to a month to, before it's out to every customer. Yeah. The rollout process takes some time. Yeah. Um, and we're planning on, or we developed the new, uh, the new software, we developed in a couple of months, uh, and then it is deployed, and then it's in production, and it's in production for all the customers that wanted to use it for now. I mean, it's not deployed to all customers yet, uh, because they need to adapt it in, in their way, um, but they have it, you know, it's, it's right there, it's deployed, yeah. when we fix it, it's in a, you know, hours, couple of days, it's out, and it's out in production in different data centers for different customers. And we've come full circle, the life of, a, of an architect. It's, uh, <laughs> it sounds like it's much better today. Sebastian, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Appreciate thank your you time so and much. your insights. And thank you for watching. Keep it right there. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022 from Boston. Dave Vellante for Paul Gillen. We'll be right back. <laughs>